In this video, I'm going to show you how to find several different characteristics of a wave and how to use four different equations that you'll need to know for this class. First, let's find wavelength, represented by the Greek letter lambda. In order to find wavelength, you need to measure from one point on a wave to the next consecutive spot on that wavelength. For example, you could measure from crest to crest, from trough to trough, or from the beginning of the wave to the end of the wave on the S method. That's my favorite one. But if this was a perfect wavelength, all three of those distances would be the exact same. So here, I'm going to measure from the beginning of the S to the end of the S. And that is 24.5 centimeters. Just to reiterate, you could also measure from the, the middle of that crest to this one, and from the middle of that trough to the next one as well, and it should be the same, and actually, it looks like it is. Next, let's find amplitude. We know that amplitude is the distance between the rest and the crest, or the rest and the trough, and these should all be the same distance. So all you do is you take your ruler, and you measure. That's 7.5 centimeters. Now to find your frequency, you need to do what I call the S method. Simply trace an S on your wave train. Start at the beginning, all the way to the left, trace. That's one S and it's one wavelength. Mark it off so you know. That's one, two, three, or we're not done, 0.5. So there are 4.5 wavelengths on this wave train. Since all of our wave trains in seventh grade are going to be for one second in time, that means however many wavelengths there are on a wave train, that's the exact same thing as your frequency. And of course the frequency is measured in hertz. So we have 4.5 hertz. Alright, now that we have measured everything that we can measure, we're going to have to start using our equations. The first one that we'll look at is height. And height is equal to 2 times the amplitude. We know that our amplitude is 7.5. So, if you simply do 7.5 times 2, that gives you 15. Of course, that's in centimeters. Next is our formula for velocity. Velocity is equal to wavelength times frequency. All you have to do for that is multiply the frequency times the wavelength. 24.5 times 4.5 is 110.25. We need a unit for this. Since frequency is how many waves per second, and we're measuring in centimeters, that means it's 110.25 centimeters per second. Next, let's look at finding energy. Energy is simply the amplitude squared, as you can see right here. You can either use the fancy squared button on your calculator, or you can simply multiply the number by itself. In this case, 7.5 times 7.5, or 7.5 squared, is 56.25. So we have one more equation or formula that we need to go over, and that is amplitude is equal to the square root of energy of the wave. This is in case you're given the wave's energy and you need to find the amplitude. You'll probably need a calculator for this. Now, if you have a simple calculator like this, like the TI-108, or anything where you cannot put multiple parts of an equation in, or parentheses, or anything like that, all you have to do is type in the energy, and then hit the square root button. That looks like the check mark. If you have one of the fancier calculators with a lot more functions where you can put in parentheses and different parts of equations, then you type in the square root button first, then you type in the number, and close the parentheses and hit enter, and that will give you the amplitude. 
For example, if I found the square root of 56.25, that would come out to 